I think that, you know, as realtors um, and business owners, you, you kind of become personal brands and it evolves and transcends. So it's not just, you know, the bricks and mortar, it ends up being a bigger thing. So patience is a huge thing I've, I've had to learn. I have to learn it the hard way. Um, sometimes you go into things expecting things to happen quickly. Um, but that might not be the best route. I love that patience. I'm probably the most impatient person behind James. So it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are back. Welcome to Rise Above the Ranks. We are back today with a brand new episode where today we are joined by London's hottest realtor, Tony Corbin. We're excited to have a fellow Brit join the show today, primarily known for his house tours on TikTok, among other content. Toby is a man of the world, traveling to some incredibly unique places. We're all excited to have you join us, Toby. First and foremost, thank you for being here. How are you doing, mate? Thanks, James. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here with, with the two of you. I've seen you guys obviously online and on a big screen. So you guys, Toby. honestly, this is this is a surreal moment. I, I wish I could have met you guys more informally, formal, whatever. But this is crazy that I'm meeting you guys. By the way, I'm, um, I'm yeah, super happy that that. Do, do you ever come what out here? Is, um, I I do, but like not LA, but America. I mean, I hadn't been back because of the COVID travel ban, so I went back in, in December. Um, but I'm gonna start coming back more frequently. But I'm doing well. I'm here in London. It's not as uh, sunny as LA, um, okay. but it's 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 going well. Welcome, Tobe. Welcome. We, we we just actually flew back from London. We were there last two days ago, Jim. Right? It wasn't two days ago. We just got back to LA, literally Tuesday. We That's got lucky like... with the weather. We got lucky with the weather. I just spoke to my brother. Actually, he said it's still sunny. So congratulations. <laughs> and it's about to piss down with rain here in LA. So there you have it, my man. So Tony, Toby, let's get right into it. Tell us about yourself. What got you interested and uh, started out in the in, in the real estate career? Sure. So I guess the earliest the earliest point I can remember was a mate of mine in uni who was an agent. Uh, I went to to Union Estates, and and being an agent is kind of like second nature for a lot of people in in the states. And um, yeah, he took me on kind of like a day in the life with him, and I got to see kind of how he works. I got to see an open house and just the basics. And that was enough to kind of inspire me to um, figure it out when I got back. And um, yeah, got back to the UK, applied to a bunch of firms, hopped into the corporate world quite quickly. And um, yeah, it was it was that point where I realized that that wasn't for me, at least the, the UK version of, of property. Um, far too traditional. I'm, I'm very entrepreneurial myself. Uh, started a few businesses in my early ages and um, yeah, I just wanted to provide that personal touch and I couldn't really do that. So I decided to venture out on my own, um, had, had a bit of backing, I guess, from uh, a kind of brokerage system that they had in the UK. And yeah, did a few deals by myself, the whole cold calling, uh, cold calling helped a lot, managed to get a few deals over the line and COVID hit. So I was stuck at home, didn't know what to do, had this business, had no salary coming in. And um, I thought it was over. I thought that was it. I made a huge mistake. I should have stayed with my my corporate job where I had the guaranteed salary. I had the guaranteed everything. And um, yeah, so look, I, I was like, look, I have to do something. So, saw social media as an outlet to build, to, to build a personal brand, provide some value, and just kind of market myself as an agent. And essentially started uploading some videos. Uh, first one was kind of like a, a property one of my clients had for sale did kind of well but what stuck out to me was the comment section where someone was like hey i'm in the building next door can i get some more information on this and it was a well put together comment it, you know it didn't seem like a, a child or a teenager so i thought okay look there's there's potential clients on these apps so i took it seriously i kept posting my next video um luckily enough went viral and from there i realized you know what this is something serious i'm gonna i'm gonna take this seriously so i, I kept posting and um yeah, four years later, here we are. Managed to manage to close some deals through social media. I've, I've I've built quite a presence for myself, and and I'm really grateful. You know, I'm really grateful. I'm still on the journey. I'm still early, funny enough, and um, I'm just I'm happy to be where I'm at at the moment, and um, I'm taking it all in essentially. So that's yeah, that's my story so far. Amazing. 
Quick question, because obviously you've already built an incredible following on social media, which is not easy to do because it's all about consistency and 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 being unique, right? Being yourself. Um, you've actually got some press coverage from some of your social media uh, on a variety of outlets. What what's been the most surreal thing that's happened to you as a result of that? Oof, from the press. Honestly, that I mean, the press is the press is amazing. I think for me, it was. The most surreal thing was getting clients contact me from 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 my Instagram, having them DM me, um, having people that I looked up to um, in different industries that are that are kind of uh, I guess renowned in their own right say, "Hey, I'm looking for a home," or "Do you know anything about this home for sale?" That that was the most that's been the most surreal thing, and it still is every day. So, press is press is phenomenal. Um, I appreciate all the press that I can get, especially when it's organic. I mean, it's only organic for me. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess it's the socials. It's just that that inbound that inbound lead and someone contacting me and saying, "Hey, um, you know, can I get some? Can I can I inquire into your business or, or into what you do? How can I use your services?" So yeah, love it, man. Love it. I think I think everybody that is you know fifteen to forty is trying to use social media, right? In in at least our world of real estate, and the ones that do always want to know like what was it that drew so many eyeballs to your content why do you think the audience were connecting with you what did you do differently and i think that the, the, the thing i find is that people that decide to use social media they think they can do it twice and then they're going to go viral and the rest is history and they're going to make loads of money but i'd love to know like what it is that you think made people connect with you is it consistency is it authenticity is it a combination like what really got people hooked on on toby corbin yeah no i think that's a great question i think for me um what it was was intent i'm i'm a true i'm truly a believer in intent and and i started out with the intent of 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 building my personal brand providing some value and marketing some homes not even to sell homes you know, I've, I've, I've always been kind of uh, someone that's that's uh, thought about the long game and things. So I just figured, look, if I'm going to if I'm going to do this long term, if this is going to be a career for me, how can I start out the best way possible? And um, yeah, my intent was was wasn't to sell. So I guess to answer your question, it was it was how can I how can I give some value to people um, mm -hmm. without necessarily looking for anything back immediately? So, so all my content that I first put out, my, at least my first 50, 50 to 100 videos weren't even me selling. You know, I'd partner with agents, I would showcase some homes, um, and it was just kind of like, a, what do you think about this? Or even there was some, some uh, educational content, um, you know, best ways to rent, how to rent, uh, tips and tricks. So things like that. I think it was, it was the, um, the, value, the, the, the value, the information, and the intent. Obviously, I think authenticity and 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 whatnot was played a part. Yeah. Um, but I but I definitely think it was it wasn't selling immediately. That was what helped. I think every agent that's watching this right now is wants to know the answer to this question from you, Toby, the pro. Is what makes a good house tour video? What makes a good house tour video? Uh, I would say it's it's catching the right angles of the home. You have to, you know, walk through the home, try and figure out what the best points are in the home, the best places, uh, things that are, are visually appealing, going through that house, um, then on, on video and capturing it as you'd see it in your, in, you know, if, if you were walking through, um, the home. So, so yeah, I would say, I would say it's capturing the right angles, showcasing the best things possible, having a gimbal, having, you know, stabilization. I think that really helps, uh, yeah, I think that, I mean, editing also plays a big part. And let me ask you, because I was on your page the other day, like you're not just doing homes now, right? Like I saw you going, uh, I forget which football club it was for Americans, that's soccer. Uh, I saw you like down on the, on the, on the, on the field of a, a football club. Like you're, you're now sort of branching out. Is real estate still your focus or do you have like a bigger vision of where this is now going? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, real estate, real estate for me is it's it's the that's that's the career that I've chose. I think that you know, as realtors um, and business owners, you you kind of become personal brands, and it evolves and transcends. So it's not yeah. just you know the bricks and mortar; it ends up being a bigger thing. So 
that was very natural. You know, I, I love football. I played football growing up. And um, yeah, that was just an opportunity I got. And, and, and funny enough, it was that was through a real estate arm who were who were sponsoring that that whole thing um, that that came about. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess I guess real estate is more than more than the bricks and, and water. So I, I just try and um, or yeah, I try to naturally fill 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 everything out um, without overextending. You know, you won't catch me kind of, I guess, promoting uh, underwear or. Good man. Or Good man. Like that, so. I'll, I'll never forget Dave, Dave and I did million dollar listing for eight years um and you know we got offers here and there um and one was from a fried chicken company and I won't <laughs> mention any names oh, man. and I was like god we do love money but really we cannot <laughs> put our name to the fried chicken guys like it's just it has to be do we not do it be, no Are we you? didn't we, we got a lot of gift cards, but I never ate any of them. But, but I will say, like anything that you do, Toby, anything that anyone does around the social media world, it has to feel authentic to your brand. It has to feel real. I By think the way, the I reason, love fried chicken. Speak for yourself. <laughs> we do love fried chicken, but we don't need to sponsor <laughs> it's good it. good stuff. Um, but you've got to be authentic to who you are, right? And, and who Toby Corbin is, who James is, who David is. That's not who everybody else is. So I think if you're going to find a niche on social media, find what feels authentic to who you are so that your followers can really connect with you. Because if you're doing something that doesn't feel authentic, people aren't going to buy into it. Like you just said, football's authentic. You played football. People could connect to you when you're on the pitch and you're talking about a club. So be real, be authentic. But I do have to ask, uh, have you heard that Selling London is coming out, which is the franchise of Selling Sunset? And what's the talk on the street in London about that show coming out? I, I did see that show coming out. I mean, it, it looks interesting. You know, I think, um, you know, any way that an agent's trying to, to mix things up and innovate the industry, I, I'm, I'm all for it. I think uh, a lot of the time it takes the right people being able to do it. And, you know, putting yourself out there, going on TV is a hard thing. You know, it's, it's, it's easy. It's easy to watch. It's, it's, you know, it's not as easy to do because, you know, it comes with, it comes with pushback. It comes with, um, especially you know, in feedback. London, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in London. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, if it's done in the right way, I'm, I'm definitely for it. And I think a lot of people in the industry are buzzing about that. I think, you know, um, it has some good faces on it. So, so let's see, let's see what, you know, let's see what happens. It's what funny, do you guys yeah. think about the show? No, in, 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 in LA, I always said it when James and I first started Million Dollar Listing, it was pretty much when we, you know, we, we probably been in the industry for six months in LA, right? We did real estate in London, but in LA, it was about six months, we were pretty fresh. And it was so strange because coming from London, you know, the, the whole like mindset of, of, the, uh, of the customer is like, agents don't have a good rep like estate agents typically well didn't before right maybe they do now uh, still don't <laughs> okay fine. i don't want to like overstep the mark there by saying that um but james and i were sitting there and we were in la and we were like this is so weird because people celebrate realtors in la it's a totally different kind of like vision that they have the customers right and here we were like two relatively newbies young at the time starting this show and people literally like giving us compliments and taking us really seriously and and it was just a real it was a culture shock to us a good one right but it was it was interesting and it'll be interesting to see with selling london if that kind of shifts that 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 dynamic between the 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 the, the perspective of the consumers to the agents in line with with LA, for example, I don't know. What do you think? I, I I think selling London, and I'm just giving you guys my genuine thought. I think it's going to be a massive success. I think Londoners may not like it, and competitors may not like it. And we know Danny Daggers; we've known him most of our life. But I believe selling London will be a huge success. I think the rest of the world are intrigued by London, London real estate. Um, and I think it's time, you know, I think, like David said, uh, estate agents have been badly looked upon in the UK. But when you have an outlet like Netflix, it's not 
the UK, it's the rest of the world. And I think people are going to be intrigued by uh, UK real estate, UK life, UK drama. It's and it's so different. It's, it's so different to the US. It is beautiful architecture. I mean, you see like, you know, million dollar listing New York, for example, right? You see these big buildings, but LA, uh, sorry, you didn't have many single family homes like we do in LA. But London does have beautiful single family homes. It has beautiful architecture. It has beautiful density. And like James said, you know, it's, it's fast paced. You're going to have some drama. I actually think it's great because we come from an amazing place. We really do. Here's what I think. Toby Corbin, season two, selling London. Let's go. <laughs> Let's Are go. Gonna, Are you going to be in it, Toby, at all? Oh, I mean, who knows? Who knows? You might see me, me pop up. Um, no, no, no. But <laughs> I think I'm with you guys, though. I'm with you guys. I think that it does, it's time for it. It's time for that kind of change. I think the only difference, the major difference is that in the US, it's a profession. Whereas in the yes. UK, it's, a, you know, there's no, it's, there's no licensing. There's no training. Right. You could, right. you could just cowboy it essentially out of, out of secondary school. Um, and that might just be the fine line. And that might just be the difference. Um, but yeah, let's see. I think that Netflix, Netflix is going to change things a lot. Um, a lot of eyeballs and there's a lot of there's a lot of professionals that are very very good at what they do here um, and they deserve the credit you know yeah. so I think 100%. that this can do it for them okay it is 2024 and your real estate tech needs to keep up fortunately Dave and I leverage Boomtown Pro and the name really does say it all it empowers professionals like us with lead gen smart CRM, automation tools, AI capabilities, and white glove support to stay ahead of the game. To go ahead and claim $250 in free leads, visit insiderealestate.com slash blueprint and use the promo code blueprint. That's insiderealestate.com slash blueprint. It's Amazing. a good disruptor and we're, we're excited to see it and we wish them nothing but mad success. So changing, changing direction, now that you're a realtor and we see you as a content creator, uh, two of those are both very stressful jobs and they're both full-time jobs in their, in their own right, Toby. So how do you manage the demands of both? Like, how do you split your time? Oh, for sure. So, I mean, now it's got to a point where I have a team um, who are who are essentially helping me, uh, you know, with the content and then with leads. So that helps a lot. I think the the basics has been waking up really early, <laughs> and, um, yes. you know, get it, getting to work as, as, as soon as possible uh, while still like, you know, paying attention to my health and and taking care of myself. So. So, yeah, it's, it's really been about, um, you know, utilizing utilizing the team where I can and, and getting getting advice where I can on, on certain things, you know, in terms of content, I have a lot of help there too. So yeah, I guess, I guess the team side of things has really been what helps the most with, with splitting my time um, between the two. And I guess the best thing now is that, you know, the content is helping the, the core business. So in essence, I, I get to, you know, be quite selective with who I'm working with. Um, you know, I, I would love to work with everyone, but sometimes it's not the right fit. And, um, you know, that's something that I have to appreciate too, because I want to make sure I'm giving my clients the, you know, the best that I can. Yeah. So, so when it's the right client, when it's the right fit, uh, I make sure it works out. So, so yeah, that, that's kind of been how I've been balancing the two. Can you see yourself selling real estate in another market? Ooh. The Toby expansion. <laughs> I, I definitely could. I definitely could. I think, I think the U S might be on the horizon. Who knows? Um, but well, you know uh, where to find us, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think what you guys have done is, is, you know, it's amazing. I I've seen you guys, you know, a million, million dollar listing for years now. And just to see some Brits out there, really, I, I don't really know your full story in the UK. I just saw you guys. You in don't America. want to know like, it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> It, it would be good to get a bit of background, but uh, I mean, were you guys, which which firms were you guys with in the UK? So I started in the real estate industry literally at the age of 16. And he walked uh, straight into the lamppost. <laughs> yes, I was, I was, I, I hated every second of school. I was thrown out of every school I ever stepped foot in. Uh, and I started in Northwest London in West Hampstead, uh, a, a company called Dutch and Dutch. Um, I did residential for two years, commercial for two and a half years, absolutely loved it, 
did well. And then I came to LA, which was supposed to be for three months. And that was 20, 20 years ago now, which is just wow. absolutely mental. And Dave, different path, but similar with, with real estate, which obviously Dave, go ahead and tell everyone. Well, just real quick, I just went into commercial real estate. I just kind of like tried to run before I could walk, which was a great lesson. Sometimes, you know, you learn from, you know, your up, excuse my language. Yeah. They say uh, success is failure turned inside out, right? So um, thought I could go and buy a bunch of commercial real estate for an investor. The credit crisis hit. Everything got completely wiped out. Lawsuits, you name it. Um, it got bad. And uh, But I was young enough. I was 24, 25. I could dust myself off had no responsibility. And James, my best friend, obviously was out here in LA. And I said, I'm out, I'm coming out, basically. And I did. And 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 the rest is the rest is history. But I just want I just want James to share one story about the lamppost. Please share it, James. Yeah, so my first showing in real estate, I'm walking, I've done this showing, I'm feeling really good about myself, and I'm walking up a hill to get back to the office and the two clients are walking ahead of me and I'm walking behind them and I'm looking down on my phone and I went smack right into a lamppost and whacked my head and I looked up and I was in agony but oh, no. these two clients they didn't notice that I had done this so I just stayed quiet I was like just get back to the office no one will know and I got to the top of the, 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 the street and these two guys turned around and they just looked at me and they go, are you all right, mate? And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, I'm fine. Why? And they go, your entire forehead's bleeding. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was like, well, sh guys, I'm sorry to admit, but I walked into the lamppost <laughs> right down the street. Oh, my God. And that was basically the story of my childhood growing up. Everything went wrong um but 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 you figure it out and that's that was how my oh, that's, how my good real estate career, yeah. <laughs> that's how my real estate career oh, that's started. So, good. so i i gotta ask you tony you recently told for those that don't know the newspaper the standard that your goal is to be a part of the change in the industry and to be at the forefront of innovation so i want you to tell everybody like what does that mean for you what do you want to change how do you want to change it? For sure. I mean, big, very big statement for me. But uh, yeah, l let me try and back it up here. Um, <laughs> no, essentially, yeah. I think that, you know, what, I, what I've been doing has, has been somewhat a change. You know, um, agency in the UK, I don't need to tell you guys this, but, you know, for the past 40, 50 years, it's been very traditional um, in every way, shape and form. Uh, and that's not to, to the wrong of anyone or anything. I think that, you know, systems just change, things change. We hit a tipping point you know, uh, during COVID and everything went digital. Um, to an extent, I was one of the first people to, to hop on TikTok and start posting things in, in, in the London market. And um, that that was innovative. Um, so I guess, you know, every day I'm, I'm trying to think differently about how I'm approaching things. While still sit, staying in the guidelines, I think that now with a bigger audience, um, you know, I, I do have more eyeballs on me. So in, in, in essence, I have to be a bit more careful. Um, but but I'm still looking to see where I could provide more value, um, yeah. while, you know, whilst using tech. So, so if there's if there's an avenue, if there's a road, if there's things that I can do that that can help, um, I'm I'm more than happy to look into it and entertain it. So I think that's really what that what I mean by that. Um, that's what that statement means. Um, so so it's just it's just a gradual growth with with like innovation with with the digitization of the world. Love that. Good, good, I didn't good even man. know what Zoom was up until uh, COVID. No, I, look, did you know what Zoom was before COVID? No, I didn't Actually, think it was that don't big. I even know if I did, to be honest. In the stock, the stock of, of Peloton, which is the bike thing, and Zoom went yep. through the roof. Do you remember that? And then, yep. it, and then it kind of corrected afterwards. But crazy. But it, 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 you're right. It's such an interesting thing. But I think for my takeaway from you, Tobe, is – can I call you Tobe, by the way? I always shorten people's Shh. names. Sure, that's fine. James keeps calling me Tony, though. So, Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> we have a Tony on once. My dad's called Tony, actually. Um, so my takeaway from you is what you did is you turn a negative or a potential negative into a positive, right? Yeah. As you said, like you, you, you were hit by COVID. You were ready to go rock and roll, and 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 COVID hit, and obviously you you thought you made a mistake. But what you did is you turned that negative into a positive, and I actually think that's a really good 
rule of thumb for life. You know, sometimes we, we get tested and we think everything's going wrong. But in retrospect, if you if you stay on your lane and you really don't give up and you get creative and stay level headed to a degree, you look back on those moments and you think they're the defining moments. You know, they're the that's what was placed into me so I could evolve. And I have a lot of respect for you, Toby, that you did that. Thank you, David. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. yeah, that was that was essentially it. I just my back was against the wall, so so I had to think. You know, what can I do? I can fold, or or I can try and look at the horizon and see things brighter. So that's yeah, that was the road that I took. I guess. Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you really did. And you know, the other takeaway I've got from this, from start to finish, is everything you have said during this podcast has shown us at least that you're putting real estate first. You know, you're not actually putting social media as the first. Like we, when we were on the show, it was always the real estate first and then the show. And I think what you're doing that's very smart is you're just utilizing social media for real estate. And I think that's really smart because it can be very easy to get swayed and pushed and moved into other directions. But you're using this incredibly powerful platform to build your business, build your brand, build who Toby Corbin really is. And this is a great way for people to get to know you, understand you, and then ultimately want to to work with you. And I, I, I think that's impressive. I do want to know, what do you do outside of real estate? Like, how are you spending your free time? Um, are you still out shooting content on TikTok? What, what does Toby do uh, in his free time? Do you take pictures of your food when you eat and stuff like that? Is it like oh, a dick? Oh, here we go. He's into food. David loves food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm where this is going. I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those. I'm not one of those content creators, but um, yeah, I've, I mean, I've seen a lot of those videos. They look kind of. I think one of the most viewed videos now is a video of, of strawberries with chocolate sauce. Which is, really? Which, Mine's yeah, which fast is, food. This is my feed. It's oh, just food. People wow. eating food and cars as well, but. It's, oh, it's that's a else. positive feed. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I am not showing you my feed. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, but yeah, it's that. Go on, Toby. What, what, what are you doing in your free time? Oh yes. Yeah, so um, I mean, free time. I'm with my, with my loved one, my fiance, we spend a lot of time together. So um, she's, she's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when are you getting married? When are you getting hitched? In, in a couple months, in a couple of months. Yeah. So, um, We'll wait Things. for the invite in the post, mate. We'll wait for the invite. <laughs> it's um, fun here in my water. So, so I spend a lot of time with her, and um, she's she's in the art world. So we we go to a lot of galleries. She's oh. getting me into art now, so I'm starting to look at it differently. And I like the oh, story nice. around certain pieces and, and artists. So that's that's really cool. Um, and um, I love sports, football, basketball, where I can, um, running, um, real estate <laughs> content. So, <laughs> love, that. Um, love that. Yeah. Love that, man. Is there any parting wisdom that you would like to share with our listeners, Toby? Ooh. Uh, maybe, maybe a lesson, maybe a less, I guess a lesson I've learned recently with, with, um, going through the motions right now in my, I guess my fifth year in real estate. Um, and that's just, uh, might sound a bit corny, but but pa- patience is a huge thing. I've I've had to learn. I had to learn it the hard way. Um, sometimes you go into things expecting things to happen quickly, um, but that might not be the best route because sometimes you're not ready for those things that you want so quick. And and I think that by waiting, you become someone. You become something better. You become someone better. Mm. And um, yeah, it gives you a better outlook on on things. I think. So, right. so yeah, just, just, just the patience I've, I've learned this past five years, um, things, things will happen when they're supposed to happen. And any old person, when I say old person, really old person will say exactly the same thing. They have, they have the, the insight 50, 50, they have retrospect, they've been around, they, they've seen it and they're normally so calm. You know what I mean? They've seen everything, all these little worries we have, all these little like, uh, distractions we have, they're meaningless in the grand scheme. Uh, but I love that patience. I'm probably the most impatient person behind James, so it's good. To... <laughs> <laughs> At least you're number two. <laughs> I'll have to take number one. <laughs> uh, do. do you guys? Do you guys? Do you guys have any advice for me? I, I would love anything, man. Anything you guys think you could throw throw my way? Go keep for it, Dave. Going, just just keep going and get creative and just for James, for me, and I, th- I know James for a fact. It's just like 
you know, we were going to work harder, we were going to work smarter, we were going to remain ethical, we weren't going to get greedy. And, you know, we had the, we had the, I mean, thank God, these agents that took it to the next level, we could look up to, right? They, they really pushed the barriers. And it's like, if they can do it, why can't we do it? And that's just the way it is. That's the way I look at it. We're not reinventing the wheel. Yeah, you can, you know, get creative, but it's a proven industry, you can just take it to the max. And you're doing that. You're doing that. My my only advice to you, joke, jokes aside, is I wouldn't put all of your eggs into one basket with with social media. If you know, social media is a great it's a great following. It you can monetize it, but you're going to do very well in real estate. You're clearly very likable. You're clearly creative because you've already shown that in what you've been able to build and and do thus far. Like use it as a platform. And think bigger. Like, I don't know the price point of, of homes that you're selling now, if it's a million or three million or five million. But, you know, we always say to our team, like, there's no difference in closing a two million pound house or a 50 million pound house. The commission's just 30 times bigger when you sell a 50 million pound house. So never sometimes feel the, like... The 50 million's easier. <laughs> not sometimes, most of the time. Like, don't, don't, yeah. don't, ha- don't handcuff yourself because you're scared to get to the next level or jump through a hoop or you think you're less than one of these big boy agents in the West End. Like, no, you're Toby and you can make it happen and you should go after it and get it because you've got as good of of chance as any of your competitors do. So just don't, Mm -hmm. don't have a ceiling to your success would be, would be our advice. stay, Stay true to yourself, which you do a good job of. Man, this has been great. Toby, thank you so much for joining, my man. Thanks, We've uh, enjoyed getting to know you. We'd love to have you back on uh, Rise Above the Ranks again in the near future. If you're ever in LA, please hit us up. We'd love to hang and, and grab a coffee and go to a Laker game. Um, and we hope that everybody has enjoyed this segment with Toby Corbin. Thank you for listening to Rise Above the Ranks. And we will be back next week with a new episode. Thank you so much, Toby. Thank you, Toby. Great to see you.